A really good morning, everyone. Good. Well, quite a, quite a phenomenal morning today across all our sites. Really exciting morning. Um, and I just want to start again by saying a huge thank you to those people that have come here today to support those that are being baptised. I know for you it might be a bit unusual being here, a bit, a bit different for you this morning, but I know your presence here really matters to those that are being baptised. So thank you so much for that. You'll be pleased to know you're not going to be asked to make any vows or give any speeches. Just, uh, just enjoy being here with us. And so we've got a total of 11 people um, being baptised across our three meetings uh, today here at Hazelmere and down on Desborough Road, a uh, number of people in our first meeting and our third meeting down at the town centre site. So before we get on with the baptisms, I want to talk a bit about what is going on here this morning and why it's a really important day for those that are being baptised. What fantastic to hear those testimonies. So, so powerful, so moving and so real and just so, so great to, to hear those testimonies. Um, but uh, the f- first thing I want to say is that... Um, Baptism by full immersion might, might be quite different for some and might not be your experience as you come here today that you're used to around baptism. You can be reassured this isn't some kind of strange ritual that we've just created here. It's been going on for thousands of years, this, this type of baptism. And it's fair to say that across the UK alone today, there are probably hundreds of people, young people, um, older people, adults, getting children, getting baptised uh, today, mums, dads, brothers, sisters and mothers-in-law. Um, getting baptised today. And um, actually, we first read of baptism in Matthew's Gospel, in Matthew chapter 3. Uh, and we, we read about John the Baptist. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. And John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan confessing their sins. They were baptised by him in the river Jordan. So it would have been really quite a sight. You can imagine it was a very hot day, no doubt, and just lots of people just queuing up to be baptised by this probably very wild-looking man. Um, Thankfully, the people doing the baptisms today have not been fed on a diet of wild honey and locusts over the last few months. But it would have been quite a sight. And then we fast forward in in the Bible to the book of Acts. And the book of Acts is an account of the early church, which really met in homes um, and in temple courts. So similar to how to this church began in homes in Hazelmere uh, 50 years ago now and has grown from there. So the book of Acts is this account of the early church. And we read about Peter, one of the disciples, who's who's preaching to the, the crowds of people about Jesus. And uh, it says here in the book of Acts, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? And Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. That's a lot of baptisms in a day. That's a lot of towels, isn't it? It's probably very warm, so I won't go into practicality. But, you know, just 3,000 just being baptised on that day. Fast forward 2,000 years to today, even more people are being baptised around the world. Here are just a few examples on the screen behind me. Um, Just coming up. Brilliant. So uh, just one story there of the the one with the guys with their hands in the air. Um, The prison warden at Cofield Prison in Anderson County is about 90 miles 90 minutes outside of Dallas, houses 4,000 criminals, um, and these are hardcore criminals, invited Gateway Church to baptise inmates from the solitary confinement section. These were the most dangerous criminals. These were drug cartel leaders and gang leaders. And um, uh, the, 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 the prison invited um, Gateway Church to come in and, and, and baptise some of these inmates. Um, Niles Holsinger, the prison campus pastor, spoke to the inmates before their baptism and asked them why they wanted to be baptised, just as we have today. And one of the men said these words. He said, I've tried it my way my whole life, and it's gotten me here in this prison. I want to try it God's way. We're going to come out of the water as new men. And the, bottom, the photo there in the bottom left is a man there called John, um, who's a spinal injury being carried by his father and friend after his baptism in the Aegean Sea in Greece. Uh, in 2015, some of you might remember that, Arsenal defender David Luiz uh, was baptised in the swimming pool of his then Paris Saint-Germain teammate Maxwell. 
And um, David Luiz posted a message on Instagram that received more than 350,000 likes. And his post said these words, How marvellous to live with the Lord. Thank you for loving me so much and taking care of me. My life is yours and I am just your servant. You are always at the centre of all my decisions. I love you, my God. Amen. It's great, isn't it? A more recent tweet from David Luiz on September the 30th received 7,500 likes on Twitter, and it consisted of three really profound words. Come on, Arsenal. (laughs) (laughs) Some will... A lot less likes, and that will resonate with some and not with others. I I appreciate that. Um, But of course, by far the most well-known baptism is the baptism of Jesus. And I'm going to read again from Matthew's Gospel. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? And Jesus replied, let it be so. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water, and at that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. And alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. And imagine all the others being baptized at that time who saw this would have been amazed. And they would have said, Who is this man, this carpenter from Nazareth? As we heard from the stories this morning, at the heart of their decision, Liz, Tenny, Jackie, Steve, at the heart of their decision to be baptised today is their personal relationship and faith in Jesus. Baptism does not come out of a relationship with a church or a denomination or people in the church. It's a response to a relationship and a faith in Jesus. It's a very, very public, it's a very public outworking of a very personal relationship with Jesus. And Jesus said to his disciples, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And you know, Jesus never asked us to do something that he would not do himself. Jesus asked us to love our neighbors, and he showed love to everyone he saw. He asks us to forgive others that offend us. And he forgives those that were hurling insults at him on the cross as he was being crucified. He asks us to be patient with each other, and he's patient with us. He was patient with his disciples. He was patient with Peter, even though he denied him three times and gave him a second chance. And Jesus asks us to be baptized, and he himself was baptized. He's demonstrating what we should do. His act of baptism was an act of true leadership by example. By being baptized, Jesus was identifying with us. He was identifying with our need to be baptized. He was humbling himself, and that's why John the Baptist said these words, that Jesus was humbling himself and showing us the way so that we would follow And notice that whenever we see baptism in the Bible, whenever we read about baptism, we always hear before it about repentance. Turning away and acknowledging sin. In fact, the only recorded example of baptism in the Bible where there is not repentance first was the baptism of Jesus. This turning away from sin, this saying sorry, this acknowledging that I have done wrong, always precedes baptism. So baptism is this outworking declaration, as we've heard from the testimonies today, of this inner relationship with Jesus and this saying, I'm sorry, and now I want to be baptized. Now, we don't have time this morning to unpack the topic of sin, but I think we would all agree that when we hear the words pride and greed and anger, envy, malicious talk, Uh, murder, sexual immorality, they're all bad. They all create negative emotions in us because we know they are not good. 
But actually, sin in the Bible is all of those things and anything that separates us from God. And we heard Steve's testimony there about the Alpha Course. And on the Alpha Course, um, Nicky Gumbel, who's the pastor at Holy Trinity Brompton, where the course was developed, uh, Nicky tells this story. Um, actually, it's an illustration. And he says, actually, if there was a, a scale of sin, and right at the right, sorry, scale of goodness, and right at the bottom was Pol Pot and Hitler and, and bad people who we, we hear about, and right at the top was Mother Teresa or somebody that's really known for their goodness, where would you put yourself on that scale, on that goodnessometer? And, I, and, and you know, it's quite interesting because I don't, I, I'm probably not in the bottom quarter because that, that's a bit harsh, but I wouldn't want to put myself halfway because maybe, where would you put yourself on that? The reality is, none of us make the grade, even Mother Teresa. None of us make the grade because the Bible says that all have sinned, all miss God's mark, all miss God's standard. But the good news is that Jesus was a perfect, sinless man. He gave his life as a sacrifice for our sins so that we can all be completely forgiven for everything that separates us from God. The Bible says if we confess our sins to him, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that's what we've heard from these brilliant testimonies this morning. They've put their faith in Jesus. They've received forgiveness and eternal life. That's why this morning is such good news. That's why it's such a celebration. And Jesus' baptism was also a profound moment because baptism is an illustration of death and resurrection. It's an illustration of the death of the old life and the resurrection of the new life. And that gang member in the US prison really got that when he said, we're going to come out as new men. This new man and the old man will be dead in the waters of baptism. And we read about this in the book of Romans. All of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Baptism is a celebration of the new life that Jesus has given us. So today is a funeral service for the old sinful nature, but it's a celebration of the new life in Christ and the promise of eternal life in heaven that we've all received who believe in him. Jesus has come to give everyone who believes in him new life. And he died on the cross at the hands of the Roman soldiers and then rose again three days later to give us all new life. And that's what we're celebrating today. The thing is, as we all know, you cannot breathe underwater. Well, you can with a but You're not going to come and get baptized without scuba gear. You cannot breathe underwater. And for that split second, it's death. It's a tomb. And then it's new life in him. So one, one thing I want to say to all those being baptized here, here today, uh, you'll realize very shortly, because we're nearly there, that you will get drenched. You will get absolutely drenched. You will get completely immersed and drenched, and that's a great thing. As that happens, all of you will be wet. Remember this. Let it be a stake in the ground, a day for you, when you remember that all of your sins have been forgiven. Not just most of them. Not just the ones you think should be forgiven. But Jesus says, all of your sins have been forgiven. You'll be all wet. All of your sins have been taken away from you. Hold on to that truth. Hold on to the truth that as you are covered in water, you're covered in his goodness and his righteousness. Jesus shares his righteousness with you and you receive his righteousness. What a great thing to celebrate today. We also have to let go where we might be holding on to bitterness towards others. And for some here today, actually, that might be a real struggle. There might be areas where you are struggling to forgive others, where others have said things and done things to you that maybe have offended you. And I'd encourage you today, if that's you, as we're watching the baptism and as we're worshipping afterwards, I'd encourage you today to ask God's help to forgive others. And maybe for you today, it's a day to ask God to forgive you as well. This is a great place. It's a great celebration. 
in God's family, with God's people. Just in your heart, ask God, God, forgive me for the things I've done wrong. Come into my life. We all need God's mercy. These five have received God's mercy. We all need God's mercy. Mercy is not receiving what we deserve. We deserve judgment, but God shows us mercy. I just want to conclude now with a very short video about mercy and about the power of forgiveness. Some of you may have seen this in the news a couple of weeks ago. Botham Jean was a 26-year-old Harding University graduate. He was an accountant at PricewaterhouseCoopers. And on September the 6th, 2018, off-duty Dallas police officer Amber Geiger returned home to her apartment from her shift and arrived at what she believed was her apartment to find her front door ajar. She was, in fact, at the apartment of Botham, who lived directly above her in an identical apartment. There had been multiple previous examples of residents mistaking apartment floors because of the similarity. Amber Geiger stated that she was scared as she believed that Botham Jean was an intruder. She shot him as he approached the door, and he died later in hospital. And on the 1st of October, Geiger was convicted of murder and imprisoned for 10 years. That was just a couple of weeks ago. At the end of her trial, both from Jean's younger brother, Brandt, gave a witness statement whilst Amber Geiger was in the dock. Let's hear what Botham's brother had to say. I hope you go to God with all what all the guilt all the things the bad things you may have done in the past each and every one of us may have done something that we're not supposed to do if you truly are sorry I know I can speak for myself I I forgive you and I know if you go to God and ask him, he will forgive you. And I don't think anyone could say it. Again, I'm speaking for myself, not even bad for my family. But I love you just like anyone else. And I'm not going to say I hope you rot and die just like my brother did, but I see I I personally want the best for you. And I, I wasn't gonna ever say this in front of my family or anyone, but I don't even want you to go to jail. I want the best for you. Because I know that's what that's exactly what both of them would want you to do. And the best would be give your life to Christ. I'm not gonna say anything else. I think giving your life to Christ would be the best thing that both of them would want you to do. Again, I love you as a person. And I don't wish anything bad on you. I don't know if this is possible, but can can I give her a hug, please? Please? Yes. a moving example of mercy and forgiveness and Botham's family have a strong faith and belief that he's with Jesus now in eternity Botham was a strong Christian and um, uh, you know there's not much to add to that but I just want to say 
As his brother said there, God wants the best for us. God wants the best for us. He wants the best for everyone here today. And the best is to believe in Jesus, to repent and to be baptized. And these people today have chosen that best. Chosen the best. You've chosen God's best for you. And they're following Jesus, responding to his instruction to repent and be baptized. And as they do this today, let's all celebrate with them. Let's all celebrate. Let's all be thankful for Jesus' complete and total forgiveness and his free gift of new life. Amen? Amen. Now is the time.